Dan, I am going to try to make a video here that explains a little bit about my axe method. And I have a, a Hinkle satin wedge blade here. I think it's from the 1950s or 60s. It's probably similar to what you have. And I have the Okudo number 483. It's a beautiful thick um, stone with a nice kawa on the back. And I'm going to set the bevel on this 1000 grit king. Uh, in reality it's already set but I'm going to demonstrate how I go through the motions here although it's an abbreviated uh, setup here. So I use diagonal strokes and this makes diagonal scratch pattern on the blade and I use a diminishing stroke count so I have five strokes there. Now I'm going to do three two, and one. And I'll set this stone aside. I have a bath of clean water here. I'm going to rinse off the blade. And then I have a microscope here in view. Okay. And this is the razor. Okay, now I have a switch here on my microscope that will switch the viewing from the microscope binocular to the computer. Okay, so this is the bevel set from the king. And I'm going to focus that in a little bit. Okay, that's real sharp. And this is how a fully set bevel is. The scratches go all the way to the edge. And you can see here with these synthetic stones, they make a long scratch pattern that begins all the way down at the base of the bevel, which is right here. Uh, this is the flat of the razor, the hollow ground. This is where the bevel begins. And you can see these scratches are continuous all the way up to the edge. These 1,000 grit scratches, they're relatively deep. And I'll just bring that into focus there one more time. Now, there's an area here of, uh, let me get a pencil here. There's an area here of, that the edge looks very ragged. That's what I call the false edge. Some people call it a feather edge. It's not really a burr because it's not rolled over on one side, but it's about that wide and that's all very fragile steel there and as you sharpen that will flip flop back and forth from one side to the next so we're going to wear that out with the Okudo and um, we're going to sharp and we're going to remove all those diagonal scratches okay so keep those scratches in mind here's the razor and I'll get the Okay, now I find that you can quickly hone out scratches with a slurry made with a worn out diamond plate. This is an Atoma plate and I'm going to raise a light slurry on this Okudo stone. Those are the loose slurry particles and in essence these are a little bit larger than the particles that you would get from a tomonagra because these are like bundles of grit still bound together with uh, some of the clay material. Okay, there was 10 strokes and this is not a lot of pressure. I, I think it's well way less than a pound probably more like, a, well, I don't really know, 8 or 10 ounces maybe. Okay, so there's 10 strokes on each side, then I'll go 5. Okay, so that's a total of 15 so far. 
this is 18, 20, and this would make a total of 21. So I'm going to bring the razor, rinse it off again. Okay, here is, switch the viewing over, here's the razor after 21 strokes, and you can see the there's a pebbly um, scratch pattern now replacing the diagonal uh, linear long scratches. And you may be able to see a faint pattern that is more uh, vertical straight on from the blade. I'm going to scroll down to the bevel and we may see some of the original 1000 grit scratches down here or just remnants really like a shadow of the 1000 grit scratches. Okay I'll scroll over just a little bit. There would be a, sh a couple shadows of those 1000 grit scratches and we'll follow those up to the edge. You can see they begin to fade away as we get closer to the edge. And I mean they're vir virtually gone. Okay, so there's what the edge is beginning to look like off the J Natural. It's still a little rough, but we only have 21 strokes. And that's where the slurry. So we'll go back to the stone. And at this stage, We've removed most of the scratches. I'm going to get my water over here. Have a little bit better access. Okay, so now I'm going to do a series of strokes where I, I remove the slurry. So there's one, one on each side, and we'll just rinse off that slurry. I always try to treat both sides of the bevel equally. Okay, and we'll just remove that slurry. Okay, now I'm going to do a series of uh, of ten strokes again, and I'm going to use what they call weight of the razor uh, pressure, which is this is guiding the razor down the stone. This is just keeping it straight. One, two, three. There's five. Okay, now I'm going to rinse this stone off even further. What we're doing is we're shallowing, creating shallower scratches. So I can look at my video. This has taken almost nine minutes so far. I'm going to go back up to the microscope. And this is how the edge is beginning to refine. Okay. It doesn't look anywhere as near as ragged now as it did before. And the Kasumi Japanese finish is dominating the, the edge now and most of the bevel. You can see just faint shadows that may be even the similar area where we were looking from before. Those scratches begin down from at the base of the bevel and then they end before they they reach the edge anymore. Okay, so what we have is a partially finished razor. The next thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to strop this a little bit. This is just clean leather. Stropping is important to do it evenly without rolling the edge on the leather. That was just a minimum number of strops. I want to look at, we're up to ten and a half minutes now. Okay, put the razor back in here. Okay, you're going to see how the strop has brightened up the edge a little bit. And the edge now looks more bare and refined. It's brighter, but the um, false edge looks quite distinct now. The next thing I'm going to do is I could use linen or and leather, but I'm going to go to my palm, do a certain amount of palm stropping. And you can see how that edge has become even more refined. It's much straighter now. Okay, before, I've been running 12 minutes now, before I run out of YouTube for some reason only allows me a 14 minute video, I'm going to take the razor and this is some hair, human hair, and we'll try a hanging hair test. So that came back here on this side. That just fell on the other side of the razor, and that was being held about a quarter of an inch. That just fell silently also. Um, from my experiences this would be a, a highly um, fine razor to, sh to shave with so you can see these hairs are just laying down on the other side of the razor so these are, are what I call HH5 results hanging hair test 5 so we could refine this razor a little bit more with uh, clear water passes um, and maybe and more stropping and we could maintain this razor probably over uh, a few dozen shaves so I'm going to leave the video right here and uh, and that's just a short demonstration